Hello all, I am Shatabdi Acharya from Vedang Institute of Technology. So in this module or in this video, we will be taking up a very small chapter from your syllabus which is corrosion. And in this video itself, we will be completing this. This is basically a very theoretical chapter and uh, it is not that a difficult chapter also because corrosion is a phenomenon which you all might have come across in your life, in day to day life. So before like without any delay, let us get into the topic. So what do you mean by corrosion? Basically, in a layman language, corrosion is a destructive process, okay. It is something that harms. Harms what? The metals. Basically, the metal surfaces, when they are exposed to the atmosphere, they usually get converted or they react with the atmospheric oxygen, sulfur and other uh, like elements present in the air and they get uh, or converted into their oxides or sulfide as a result of which they lose their natural physical as well as chemical properties. Like if I say iron, then normally the iron bars which we see in our day to day life like in our homes, they have a reddish brown deposition on their surface which is basically iron oxide which we call rust, right? So we might have heard that the doors and windows are getting rusted or the grills are getting rusted so we need to paint them. So that is basically the layer of the flaky layer of oxide that covers the metal. Okay, that is basically called as corrosion. So, corrosion is a natural process that converts a refined metal into a more chemically stable form. Why chemically stable form? Because, see, iron standalone, the iron metal is very reactive with air. Okay, it gets converted to its oxides or hydroxides or sulfides very easily. But once the oxide is formed or the hydroxide or the sulfide is formed, it no longer further reacts with any other uh, substance to form or convert into some newer substance, right? So basically, in its oxide, hydroxide and sulfide, the iron is a present in a very stable form, okay? It is a gradual destruction of metals. It is very slow process, right? You might have seen uh, like... If I am uh, talking of an iron gate, then it takes years to get corroded. It is not like that you will be placing a gate and overnight the next morning you observe that the gate is corroded, right? So, it takes a lot, like larger amount of time to convert itself into its oxides or to get destructed. So, basically corrosion is a very gradual process. It is a very slow process uh, of destruction of metals usually by chemical or electrochemical reactions with the environment. Corrosion engineering is the field dedicated to controlling and preventing corrosion. So, in this chapter basically we will see what is corrosion and we will see what are the ways devised to prevent corrosion. It is in the most common use of the word this means electrochemical oxidation of metal in reaction with an oxidant such as oxygen or sulfates. Basically, it is the conversion of the metal to its oxides or sulfides, okay. Rusting, the phenomenon of iron oxide is a well-known example of electrochemical corrosion that I was talking about right now. This type of damage typically produces oxides or salts of the original metal and it results in a distinctive orange coloration normally which we call reddish brown coloration. When we touch a rusted iron surface, we get some dust of or like orange or reddish brown dust on our hand. That is basically iron oxide, okay. Corrosion can also occur in materials other than metals such as ceramics, polymers. Although in this context, the term degradation is more common, okay. Corrosion, standalone, if I am saying corrosion, it more like mostly signifies a metal. But if I am saying corrosion in case of or destruction of metals like um, destruction of elements like ceramics or polymers, then we use the term degradation. Corrosion is not that applicable to this. Now corrosion degrades the useful properties of the material and structures including the strength, appearance, permeability to liquids and gases. Now if I am saying an iron rod for example, if uh, like iron rod gets easily oxidized when it reacts with air. Now if I see millions and millions of years, like a larger amount of time, then the iron bar becomes very porous. It breaks easily, right? So the corrosion basically affects the strength of the metal, the appearance of the metal and the permeability of the metal, permeability means porosity of the metal, right? Many structural alloys corrode merely from exposure to moisture in air, but the process can be strongly affected by exposure to certain substances. 
Corrosion can be concentrated locally to form a pit or crack or it can extend across a wide area more or less uniformly corroding the surface. What does that mean? If I am saying an iron bar, then the, if the iron bar is completely exposed to air, then the entire bar gets rusted. But if a part of it is like exposed to the air, then the rusting can be in the form of a pit. Okay. So, uh, like because corrosion is a diffusion controlled process, it occurs on exposed surface. Okay. Diffusion controlled means it the corrosion occurs only when the metal surface is exposed to something. Only when the oxygen molecules get diffused on the metal surface, then only they react with the iron to form its oxides. So, only those part which is exposed to air that will get oxidized. If I cover the entire metal and only expose a tiny part, then the entire metal will be protected, but that part which is exposed to air will get corroded. It occurs on exposed surface. As a result, Methods to reduce the activity of the exposed surface such as passivation or chromate conversion. Okay, we turn the metal passive. Passive means not the direct surface of the metal is exposed to atmosphere right now. Okay, however, some corrosion mechanisms are less visible and less predictable. We cannot see instant changes of corrosion in some metals, right? Now, the process of conversion of a metal into an undesirable compound on exposure to atmospheric conditions like moisture and air is called corrosion. It is also called weeping of metals. Okay, weeping of metals. Weeping means metal cry because they get destructed, they lose out of their essential properties. That's why it's called weeping out of metals. Now, types of corrosion basically, we have four types of corrosion atmospheric corrosion, water line corrosion pitting corrosion and stress corrosion. But most important of them is atmospheric corrosion. So, we will be taking up atmospheric corrosion in detail. Now, the process of development of undesirable substances usually oxide over the surface of the metal when exposed to atmosphere is called atmospheric corrosion. Okay. Whenever the metal is exposed to atmosphere, the resultant corrosion due to the, that process is called as atmospheric corrosion. Example, rusting of iron, tarnishing of silver, the silver ornaments we are wearing, we see that after some time they get converted into a black colored metal, right? They get blackened. Okay, that is basically due to conversion of silver to silver sulphide, Ag2S, that is called oxidation of silver. Now, developing of green coating on copper and bronze, you have to remember the rusting of iron is basically a reddish brown in color, the rust, the tarnishing of silver gives a blackish appearance, appearance and the development of green coating over copper and bronze. These are the characteristic color of the rust formed by or the corrosive substance formed by certain metals. Now, you see the mechanism of rusting of iron and this is very important part of this chapter. How exactly that happens? Pure iron does not rust. However, commercial form of iron behaves as a tiny electrical cell. We have learned in electrolysis, there is an electrolytic cell. So, the metal surface behaves like that in the presence of water containing the um, basically iron rust when it comes in contact with moisture. Now, that moisture contains substances like carbon dioxide, SO2, sulfur dioxide, etc. The following changes takes place on the surface of iron during the process of corrosion. What are the changes taking place? See, if I am talking of an electrochemical cell or electrolytic cell, there are two sides of the cell. One is called the anode and the other is called the cathode. So, anode in anode what happens? Oxidation happens, okay. We have a like mnemonics for that. An ox red cat. That means in anode always oxidation takes place, at cathode always reduction takes place. Now, oxidation is loss of electron, reduction is gain of electron. So, at anode what happens? Iron gets oxidized to form ferrous iron. That means iron loses two electrons to form ferrous ions. This happens in the anodic side or this is an anodic reaction. At cathode what will happen? The electrons thus form migrate towards the cathodic part of the uh, piece of iron, right? There what happens? The water that was present 
the in like the water along with the oxygen gains that electron to form a hydroxide ion 2OH minus. At cathodic part, the electrons combine with moisture and dissolved oxygen to form hydroxyl ion. Okay, or the hydroxide ion OH minus. The Fe2 plus ions that was formed and the OH minus ion that was formed, then they combine together, they diffuse under the influence of oxygen and they combine to form the Fe2 gets combined or like converted to Fe3 plus ions. Okay, ferric ion. The ferrous ions get converted to the ferric ion. These ferric ions then combine with OH minus ion to form hydrated ferric oxide, which is rust. Okay, so if someone asks what is rust? Rust is basically hydrated ferric oxide. Right, Fe2 plus in presence of water and oxygen again it gets converted to Fe3 plus and OH minus. Now Fe3 plus will react with OH minus to form Fe2O3 dot 3H2O and this is the chemical formula of rust. You have to remember this which is Fe2O3 dot 3H2O. This is rust. Okay. Next is rust is nothing but hydrated ferric oxide presence of carbon dioxide in water and traces of copper or zinc in iron accelerates the process of corrosion also corrosion process is accelerated in saline water salts basically so what is the use of this the presence of see what i have said is the iron surface acts as an electrolytic cell right and in electrolytic cell there is conduction of ions so any impurities present they can fasten the process of this conduction as a result the presence of copper zinc carbon dioxide and even saline water they can enhance or increase the uh, process of corrosion right the presence of alkalis in water or chromium and nickel in iron slows down the process of corrosion why because they are inert metals comparatively and they do not lose electrons as compared to iron they are inert okay now we have learned about corrosion what are the ways devised to protect or to prevent the corrosion the first is alloying basically combining iron with some other metals so that they form a mixture called as alloy and comparatively as compared to iron alloys take a longer period to corrode so alloying corrosion can be prevented by alloying a metal alloying prevents corrosion in two ways first is homogeneity Alloying increases the homogeneity of the metal for which the rate of corrosion is uh, like reduced. Rusting can be prevented by alloying it with chromium. It is important to note that only uniform alloy can prevent corrosion to a maximum extent. So what it basically does is when we alloy iron with chromium, there is uniform distribution of iron and chromium in the entire alloy as a result of which the surface area gets reduced and therefore the corrosion is lesser. Okay. Now if there is only uniform distribution, then only the process of corrosion can be reduced. Next is oxide film. Okay. We know already iron reacts with oxygen to form iron oxide which is rust and Iron oxide is inert, it does not react further, right? So, in some cases, an oxide film formed at the surface of the metal prevents corrosion. If the top layer of the iron is corroded, then the inner metal remains protected. Okay, because iron oxide is a very, uh, is a very stable uh, compound. Duration, sorry, duridon is a silica iron of alloy. Iron is combined with silica to form a alloy called as duridon. It is resistant to acids as a layer of silicon oxide is formed at the surface of the iron. Silicon oxide is formed at the surface as a result of which the inner iron metals remain protected. They do not come in direct contact with the acids. Okay. Next important process, process is galvanization. Now what happens in galvanization? In galvanization basically the iron is layered with a coating of zinc. Okay. Coating of iron with a layer of zinc is called as galvanization. Normally, iron gets rusted when exposed to moist air. Rusting can be prevented by applying a coating of zinc or chromium over it. The process of applying a coating of zinc over iron which prevents rusting is called as galvanization and this is basically an example of electrolysis. This is done in an electrolytic cell. 
okay during the process of galvanization zinc is used as anode and iron bar is used as cathode you have to remember here zinc is becoming an anode and iron bar is used as a cathode both the electrodes are connected to the terminals of a battery the electrodes are dipped in an aqueous solution of zinc sulfate because zinc is the one that needs to be deposited on the surface of iron so the uh, zinc sulfate is made the electrolyte uh, like electrolyte when electricity is passed the anode that is the zinc bar dissolves in it in its aqueous salt solution to liberate zinc ion zn2 plus ion which gets discharged and deposited over the cathode in this way coating of zinc is applied on the surface of iron basically what happens if i am saying this is the electrolytic cell i have a electrolyte which is a salt of zinc which is zinc sulfate now what will this zinc sulfate do this this, uh, this zinc sulfate will break down into zn2 plus plus so4 two negative now here i am making anode as zinc and cathode as iron now in at anode oxidation was taking place oxidation mean loss of electron so what the zinc atoms will do they will leave behind two electrons here and move to the solution as zn2 plus now this zn2 plus will travel to the other negative terminal there the zinc will gain electron and convert itself into here basically at the cathode reduction was taking place that means gain of electron was taking place so zinc will take up electrons and become get converted into zn2 plus will get converted to zn and as zn it will get deposited on the surface of the iron these are connected through a battery source okay so this is basically the process of galvanization okay so this was all about the chapter we have completed all the subtopics of your syllabus i hope you understand understood the process of corrosion that was not although not an not a very important topic but was a very short topic so here we have completed one chapter of your uh, syllabus uh, that's all for the video thank you so much